Thank you to my go-to time tracking productivity app, Rise, for sponsoring this video. Another year passes and it's time for what I truly believe is our most essential task of the year, the yearly review. So if you wanna start setting goals in the right way or improve your current system, look no further. This video and Notion Build tutorial is what I think a complete solution. Hello, it's Simon and welcome to my guide on how to build a goal setting template in Notion. Today, as part of my ongoing Notion from scratch series, I will walk you through the process of building a goal setting template in Notion step by step, along with the key stages and steps you need to take to review your year and plan the next. By the end of this guide then, you will have a better understanding of how to use Notion to plan your year, a beautiful goal setting template to show for it, and this guide is geared towards those of you that are both new to Notion and existing users looking for more effective ways to plan their year. So it's kind of ideas and build together. And if you want to add this build to my integrated task manager and habit tracker, go check out the previous build videos in the series first. Oh, and before we go any further, believe it or not, that entire intro was co-written by Notion AI. Yeah, so if you haven't seen my video on that yet, I really recommend checking it out because Notion AI is currently, as I speak, in alpha, and it's very cool. If you are new to Notion, it's basically my go-to all-in-one workspace application that allows you to organize your work life ideas in one place, such as taking notes, creating to-do lists, tracking projects, and much more. So make sure to check out my complete life management templates, which also include this goal setting template integrated. And of course, jump on my Notion from scratch mailing list at bettercreating.com for more builds on the way to get you started. Okay, first, a quick fire guide but an essential guide to the process. Then we'll build the Notion system to action it. So there are three stages to a yearly review, in my opinion. Number one, looking back. So the first step is to take some time to look back at the past year. What went well? What could have gone better? What did you most importantly learn from it? This step is important because it helps you see what you're doing right and what you might want to change in the future. So once you've taken some time to reflect on the past year, it's time to set goals based on what you've learned. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to change? What obstacles might be in the way and how might you overcome them? I believe in being specific and ambitious, but they still need to be believable. I also think you should only set up to three goals. Different people have different opinions on this. It's up to you. Some people like to focus on different areas of their lives and set one goal per area. But either way, this step is key to help shaping your next actions. Now that you have your goals set, it's time to actually engineer them into a system so you can do something about them. It's the only way to do it. So we need to lay out our milestones, projects, habits, and tasks that we will go through on the way to get us there. Essentially, the idea here is to reverse engineer the steps we need to take in order to reach the goal and thus ensuring we're more likely to reach it. So by taking some time to properly do this process, you can make sure that you're on the right track and that you're working towards something that you actually want to achieve. It's truly, YouTuber comment alert, change my life for the better. Okay, part two, building your yearly planning dashboard. Let's begin the build to demonstrate this process in a usable tool. Since I'm trying to keep this nice and focused, you may find you wanna pause or repeat parts of the video to build along with me at your own pace as we do it. Let's go. So let's build the goals dashboard first of all. I'm adding mine to the existing build that I've done. You'll see here we have this goals database that I previously built, but I will show you how to build that in a little bit. First of all, let's just drop a new page, forward slash page, go in, we're gonna make it full width. Let's call it goal setting and yearly planner. Let's add an icon and a cover, and we can use the new icon pack that Notion have got. Target is a good thing to search for. I'm gonna use that for some reason. Make sure I color code it. And we'll start with an empty page. There we go. I'm adding mine to the existing menu we created in earlier videos in this series, and we'll create the goals database and link it into this rest of the system. I'm gonna copy and sync it. So that's a forward slash synced block. And I'll show you how I'm using this for a global menu. Let's paste, control V, and I'm gonna add my goals to it. We will add a little target. Now the problem with this is it won't match the new symbols, so there are other ways to do this. But you know what, for now, that's pretty close. I'm going to link it to the goal setting database. And you can then jump between pages 
using the synced menu. The first thing we need is a heading. So I'm going to do H2 and we're going to call this looking back. You can call it what you like, review, whatever you want. I'm going to do forward slash back and that will change the background color if you want to. The first thing to add is a wins and losses table. So we're going to do database inline. We're going to call this wins and losses. Call it the wins. Find an icon for that. So we'll call the first name reflection. And this we're going to make a category give it a little logo and into here, I actually want to change this property to just be a select. So you can only pick one item and into here, we will put some different categories. As you'll see, I've done it in this one. We have people, relationships, action, knowledge, things, whatever you feel is correct for you. So I'm going to put those in and this is a way for you to reflect on specific areas at once. In fact, the best way to edit these is to go in and edit property and you can add new ones over here. So those are mine today. And then we want to put in a select function as to whether this is going to be a win or loss. So the category I put at the beginning Wins and losses, we're going to move to the end because we're going to filter by those and we're going to hide the database title because we don't need that. The final thing you need is just a text box, which is going to be lessons learnt. There we go. And let's just put this in and put in a loss. Let's just put a few in here. Win, win, loss. We're going to filter win or loss where it is a win. And why don't we sort by category? So that's the wins. We then just want to take this page and duplicate it and call it, you guess it, losses. This can now be hidden. And you have to now filter this one where it is a loss. Just change that over. I'm just gonna delete what's left. So we've got our wins and losses in the same table. We now finally need to add one more category, which is going to be a select. We might want to link this to a year database, but I'm just gonna do it as a select for now, and we're gonna call it year. The advantage of linking it to a year database would be that you could then roll up details into it. I'm gonna be doing that in my 2023 templates. You can check those out, but maybe we'll build that in another video. So for now, we're just going to find a year icon there we go and into here we're going to need to edit the property and we're going to want to add 22 and 2023 for example now the last thing i would do with this is i would go into the options for the board click group group by the year and we're just going to hide the no year category and now you have let's say for example experiences learned to use notion that's a win there you go. And we can also now hide the year. So there's our wins and losses table. The one thing I would do here is now set this up with an instruction. So I'm gonna to do toggle list. and I'm gonna call this one list wins and losses. Number one, drop this into there and you're sorted. Now you'll see on my previous version, this is what it ends up looking like. I have above it a review the previous year's monthly reflections. I just linked this into a journal entry and it's a way of um, filtering up monthly reflections, but that is for another video if you wanted to do that. Next up, we wanna do the same as we did for our wins in losses. So we're gonna to wanna to go to group, group by the year, hide, no year, and we are good to go. That is part one. Okay, you now need to decide whether you want to pause and fill in this section or whether you want to continue the build and come back later. Tricky decision, right? Well, I'd argue that finishing the build could be the best bet. Why? It avoids context switching, something I've learned a lot about from another brilliant time management tool I now use every day to keep focused and move towards my goals. It also happens to be today's sponsor, Rise. So look at this. The app tracks and categorizes your time in a way that makes the most sense for you, where you can set custom tracking categories and rules for apps and websites. You can even customize the app to support a specific 
focused goal on how you spend your time each day in the goals tab. That's really cool. Now, time tracking like this ensures that you're gonna focus your time and energy in line with the goals that you set in this template. And at the same time, it will help improve your ability to focus. So using Rise, you're able to set up focus sessions in relation to your goals and if you use Google Calendar, you can align it with Google Calendar, one of my favorite things about it. It also picks up on the websites and apps that might be distracting you and how often you are context switching so you can gather better metrics of your day-to-day -day activity. But perhaps even cooler than this is it's helped me do the opposite and actually remember to take breaks, preventing burnout and helping you recharge between sessions of focused work. I thoroughly recommend this. I use it every day. Go ahead and try Rise for free and maximize your productivity with it like I am. The first 1,000 people to sign up using the code Better Creating or my link in the description will get 25% off their first three months using Rise. So go check it out. I think it's a great application and thank you Rise for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up, we want to do a heading of visualize and set goals. So we're gonna go forward slash H2 again, heading, we're gonna call it that. I want to do a background color of gray again so it looks all the same. You'll see here, I. Uh, put in a little inspirational quote. I'm gonna do the same here. And that is that first part of the James Clear quote, if you recognize that. I'm gonna make that blue as well to code it all together. Now, next thing we wanna put in is a toggle heading, forward slash tog, select the toggle heading. And we're gonna call this goal setting for the year. Make it bold. Now, we're gonna turn this into one of these, a template button, which generates the new year. But, first of all, let's build this and then we'll put it into it. So within this, the first thing I want to put is another toggle inside, and we're gonna call this last year an 80-20 recap. Open that toggle up. Now the idea of this is that we essentially create two questions. I'm gonna take them from my existing one and just paste them in for my ease. Which 20% of your wins leverage the most positive impact of the last year, I should say your last year, and which 20% of your losses had the most detrimental impact on your last year. And again, I'm just dropping under there forward slash bullet list so that I can start filling it in and each time it will add it in. So what you would be doing is looking back at your previous year, at your wins, and then listing in from that what you think is most important. I think this stage of keeping it really simple is most important before you start to process it into a wider database system later on. So next, under that, let's do forward slash H3. I'm gonna call this vision. I'm going to, how am I gonna format this? I might make this just underlined. Make sure it sits within it. Oh yeah, drop it in. And the prompt for this is going to be, what is the one amazing thing you want to happen this year? And I'm gonna put a little forward slash quote to capture it. Great, move this block up underneath it. Now, the final part of this section is this. I'm gonna paste it in. Another title, so just take a moment to pause the video and add this stuff in. This is your goals for the year. Now, I've given myself a little prompt saying they need to be big enough to be scary, but achievable enough that you can believe in them and be inspired to reach them. Write them in as if they have already happened. So goal one would go in here. Again, we can maybe do a quote. And then below it, I want to add in the milestones. Now, these will be what achievements will you need to hit in order to reach the goal over the year? And let's add a number column list in beneath that. Another way to list what these are, as a reminder, is to write this, that they are specific and tangible achievements that would get you to your goal. So there's the list for those. I'm actually going to put them in like that so that they are absolutely ready to go. And the final part of this goal setting template is that we're gonna to want to do a forward slash table, just a simple table, and I'm going to put the obstacle and solutions. So these are the challenges, as you'll see in my previous one, which might come up on the process and then what the solution might be. Now, a simple table is great because you can then actually select here and you can do adjustments to it or these little buttons, if you hover over this side, what I wanna do is I want to make this a header row and I could even give it a color. You can edit the columns to fit the width of the page and then maybe we will pull this one down 
a little bit to resize it. I actually don't like that in blue, so I'm going to edit it to gray. Finally, underneath this, I'm just gonna do three dashes and that will create you a divider. So I wanna select all of goal one, copy it and paste it below. I'm gonna duplicate that, drop it in below and name it goal two and just format it so you have your three goals listed so there you go, I've got goals one, two, and three all listed within my vision section. I've got my quotes ready to go. I'm just going to close the year up, make sure it all sits in the tab, add a little colon onto here. And above it, we're gonna go forward slash template button. Now within that, we're gonna call this start new year plan. And you see, if I click on it, it currently it adds whatever's in that box. So each time I do it, it adds a to-do list. I don't want that. I'm gonna delete what's in there, take goal setting for the year in this tab and just drop it right into the box like so. Close it. If you ever wanna reconfigure this, you can just go over to the little configure button and adjust it. Close, click start new year plan and it drops it in. Now currently it drops it in above, strangely. But I don't think that's a problem because each time you do it, it will just drop above. There you go. And then you can just write in 2023 and you're away. Look at that. So I'm gonna delete that because it's nice and clean. And there are your first two stages of your goal setting template. Pretty good, right? Well, the next stage of this process is the big one, taking action. And in order to do that, we need to create our goal setting database and integrate it into our wider second brain system by relating it to the milestones, projects, tasks, and habits that will serve it. As a reminder, the idea here is to reverse engineer the steps we need to take in order to reach the goal, therefore ensuring we're more likely to reach it. You can see here in my goals dashboard, we have linked views to the these areas filtered by the current year where we can input everything needed into the system. This is where the real power of using Notion to do this process comes in. We can even add a current goals gallery view to our home screen to keep track of everything. And well, that one will have to wait for video too. Don't worry, it is in fact already filmed and ready to go. You can download it together with this one via my website or on Gumroad and for a while it will be available as pay what you feel. It's a good way for me to offer longer form content like this and if you can, a nice way for you guys to support me to continue making this content. In the meantime, do drop a like for this video and why not sign up to my Notion from scratch mailing list for occasional updates on new content like this along with other productivity ideas, tools and tech. Speaking of which, if you want to go further with getting your desk set up optimized, check out this video or click here for the rest of the Notion from Scratch series available for free on YouTube. See you there. One of those, one of those. Bye.